Hello friends, this video on motion part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now it's time to solve some problems based on whatever we have studied so far. So till now we covered what is motion, what all do we need to describe the motion of an object. So the first thing we need is the position of an object. Now in order to talk about the position of an object, we needed two quantities, distance and displacement. So these two quantities actually talk about the position of the object at any instant of time. The next set of quantities which we needed was to tell us about the rate at which the position is changing. That means how fast or how slow the motion is taking place. So those two quantities were speed and velocity. Right? Now while talking about speed and velocity, I talked about average speeds and instantaneous speeds and why are they needed. So I hope I have been able to explain you all these things clearly so far. So let us try to solve some problems so that the concepts which we have studied so far becomes clearer and it also becomes clear to you that how do we apply whatever we studied so far. They are not only theoretical stuffs, we can also apply them in our day-to-day -day practical life. So let us try to solve some problems. It says an athlete cov completes one round of a circular track of diameter 200 meters in 40 seconds. Okay, so let us suppose that you have an athlete here and he covers one round of this circular track. So if you assume this as a circle, so he covers one round of this track in 40 seconds right now diameter is given as 200 meters time to cover one round is 40 seconds that means in 40 seconds he covers one round and what is this one round one round means how much distance that is nothing but the circumference of the circle and circumference of the circle is given by 2 pi r so this will be 2 pi into r is nothing but diameter divided by 2 right so this 2 and 2 will get cancelled so it is 200 pi meters so that means this much is the distance which he covers in 40 seconds now we have to calculate that what will be the distance covered and the displacement at the end of 2 minutes 20 seconds that means in 40 seconds he covers 200 pi meters distance so how much distance will it cover in 2 minutes 20 seconds so first let us convert 2 minutes 20 seconds into seconds so 1 minute is 60 seconds so 2 minutes will be 2 into 60 seconds plus 20 seconds so what how much time is this it is 140 seconds right so let us try to calculate the distance first now in 40 seconds the distance covered is 200 pi so what will be the distance covered in 140 seconds so in 140 seconds it will be 200 pi divided by 40 into 140 so this comes out to be 700 pi now pi is 22 by 7 so this 7 will get cancelled so it will be 2200 meters so this would be the total distance covered at the end of 2 minutes 20 seconds now we have to calculate the displacement now what is displacement displacement is nothing but the distance between the initial point and the final point now in 140 seconds now 40 seconds meant one round now 40 seconds means one round so 140 seconds would mean how many round so for one round he needs 40 seconds for two rounds he would need 80 seconds for three rounds he would need 120 seconds correct that means in 120 seconds he will cover three rounds right and in 40 seconds so that means one two three rounds covered in 120 seconds so how many seconds are remaining 20 more seconds so in 20 seconds he will cover another half round right because in 40 seconds he is covering one round so in 20 seconds he will cover one round so that means this total 140 seconds corresponds to three and a half rounds right 
So that means in three and a half rounds means if you start at this point, so he will cover one round, two round, three round and then half round. So his final point will be here. Please understand this carefully. Suppose he starts from this point. So he will cover one round, two round, three round and three and a half. So that means this will be his final point and this was his initial point. Right? Now the distance between the initial and the final point is the displacement. Right? So what is my displacement here? Distance between initial and final point is nothing but the diameter of the circle. And what is my diameter? The diameter is 200 meters. You understood how we calculated it? Distance was simple, right? We first saw that for in 40 seconds he covered this much distance. Therefore, in 140 seconds he will cover this much distance. When talking about displacement, we have to determine the initial and the final point. Now, in order to determine the initial and final point, we should know how many rounds will it cover in 140 seconds. So, that is what we did. First, we calculated that in 140 seconds he will cover three and a half rounds. Now, using that three and a half rounds, we were able to find the initial point and the final point, and with that, we could find the displacement. Right? Okay. Now, let us look at the next problem. It says that Usha swims in a 90 meter long pool. She covers 180 meters in one minute by swimming from one end to the other and back along the same path. Let us suppose this is the swimming pool. A and B represents the two ends of the swimming pool. Now the problem says that the length of the swimming pool is 90 meters. So that means the distance between A and B is 90 meters. Right? Now she covers 180 meters in one minute by swimming from one end to another and back along the same straight path. That means she starts from this end, goes here, again starts from this end and comes back here. So that means what is the total distance that she is covering? 180 meters. And how much time she takes to do that? She takes one minute. So we have to calculate the average speed and the average velocity. So let us first calculate average speed. So how do we calculate average speed? Average speed is given by the total distance traveled divided by the total time taken. So what is the total distance traveled from A to B and then again from B to A? So she travels a total of 180 meters. And what is the total time taken to do so? It says she covers 180 meters in one minute. That means the total time taken is one minute. One minute is 60 seconds. So this comes out to be 3 meters per second. So this is the average speed. Now what would be the average velocity? So when we talk of velocity, it is given by total displacement divided by the total time taken. Now what will be the total displacement in this case? The distance between the initial and the final point. So initial point is point A. And what is the final point? Final point is again A because she goes from A to B and comes back from B to A. So since the initial and the final point are the same, so the average velocity would be 0 meter per second. Right? Okay. Now let us look at the third problem. It says, Joseph jogs from one end A to the other end B of a straight 300 meter road in 2 minutes 50 seconds and then turns around and jogs 100 meter back to point C in another 1 minute. So in this case what happens? So Joseph starts from one end A. So let us say this is end A of a straight road which is 300 meter long and reaches the other end B. So this is the other end B. And the length of this entire road is 300 meters. So he covers this 300 meters in 2 minutes 50 seconds. Right? Then he turns around. So from point B, he turns around and jogs 100 meters to point C. 
so he reaches he jogs some hundred meters and reaches this point C and this hundred meters to travel this hundred meter he takes how much time to travel this much he takes one minute and to travel this 300 meter he takes two minutes 50 seconds right so what are Joseph's average speeds and velocities in jogging from A to B and from A to C so let us first try to solve the first part that is from A to B so from A to B we have to calculate the average speed and average velocity so first calculate average speed average speed would be nothing but the total distance traveled divided by the total time taken so from A to B what is the total distance traveled it is 300 meters and what is the total time taken time taken to cover this 300 meter is 2 minutes 50 seconds so 2 minutes 50 seconds is 2 into 60 plus 50 so we converted it into seconds so this comes out to be 30 by 17 which is equal to 1.765 meter per second so this is the average speed now what would be the average velocity in this case now in this case the um, Joseph moves from A to B in the shortest possible part. I mean, in this case, the distance and displacement both are equal to 300 meters. So, average velocity will also come out to be 1.765 meter per second. Because average velocity would be total displacement by time taken. And the total displacement will also be 300 meters. Now, let us look at the second part. That is from A to C. From A to C. In this case, what would be the average speed? Average speed would be the total distance divided by the total time taken. So in this case, total distance would be A to B plus B to C. That means this will be AB plus BC divided by time taken. So time taken will also add up. That means this time taken plus this one minute so this will be equal to, so 2 minutes 50 seconds was 2 into 60 plus 50, that was 170 seconds, plus this extra 1 minute which is equal to 60 seconds. So this will be 300 plus 100 divided by 230. So this comes out to be 1.739 meter per second. So this will be the average speed while traveling from A to C. Now let us try to calculate the average velocity. So what would be the average velocity in this case? It would be the total displacement divided by the total time taken. So what will be the total displacement? Here initial point is A, final point is C. So the shortest distance between A and C is this one. And how much is this distance? This will be 300 minus 100, that is 200 meters. So the displacement will be 200 meters divided by time taken. The time taken will be the total time taken, that means this 230 seconds, that is the time taken to reach from A to B and B to C. So that is 230. So if this comes out to be 0 0.87 meter per second. So this would be the average velocity. So I hope that with the help of these examples, with these examples, it is get, becoming more clear to you that uh, how do we calculate average speed and average velocities. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thank you once again.